and welcome to the Fiber Tales podcast. My name is Lærke and this is a podcast all about knitting, about knitwear design and about my life in general. And as you can hear, there's a chicken that just started to, or maybe you can hear her. I think she's looking for the other two and they went for a walk and uh, she has lost them. So now she's probably going to be really noisy and that was a pheasant. <laughs> so there's a lot of life outside today because spring is really here. It feels like summer today. I'm in short sleeves and a skirt and I am so warm. It's very humid today because it was raining this morning and now, <laughs> well, yeah, you're gonna listen to her. And there's also a plane that I can hear constantly and I don't know why it's, I can just hear it rumbling. So a lot of sounds today, but I have this beautiful pile of knits that I want to talk about for today's episode. I actually wrote the show notes a few weeks ago and then I got sick. So uh, all of my works in progress, they're actually now finished. So I have no works in progress. I have a lot of finished objects to show you. And some new, okay. And I have some new, um, designs to show you. Wow, I got distracted. Let me just put the pile away because it's too hot to sit under a pile of wool. And I wanted to say today I'm outside. Um, I just put up a... Oh, she went running. I think she saw someone. I put up a sheet behind me so hopefully it will be okay to sit here if the sun comes out and if it doesn't come out then it's just the way it is. And yeah, uh, since the last time a lot of things has happened and I have some releases since last time. First of all, I want to say that uh, last time I mentioned that I did um, a little sale uh, to help support Ukraine. So I had a sale planned, but I decided to donate 30% of that sale to um, the... What did I end up going with? I think I ended up going with Red Cross. I can check that if you are curious, because I, it's been a while since I sent off the money. Um, and we gathered together uh, about 1,000, I think 1,080 dollars, so 7,600 Danish kroners. <laughs> wow, it's so noisy today. Um, yeah, so I managed to gather quite a bit to donate and I am really happy that you helped me do that. And yes, since the last time I managed to release this one, which of course was just in time for the warm weather, so it was not the most practical thing. This is my lovely sweater. I talked about it in great detail, I think. Did I? Or did I say I would talk about it today? Anyways, it's a big oversized uh, Plotulopi sweater with the yarn held double, so it's quite warm and thick. And um, yeah, it's perfect for the winter months uh, and not so much right now, but you could use it as a jacket kind of in the warmer months, so depending on where you live. The thing about this one that I wanted to do is I wanted to have the shoulders being quite fitted. So they're actually not a oversized drop shoulder, they are a fitted um, shoulder and the sweater is worked with the contiguous method. So you kind of cast on each shoulder, then you um, they meet in the back and then you work a little bit the back and then you gather everything in the front and then you just work the shoulders as you go. I don't know if you can see, so let me try to open the shoulder seam. Here you can see kind of what's happening. Um, but since it's so warm and wintry, uh, I felt like, yeah, the pattern was a bit at a wrong time. And of course I knew that beforehand, but I also wanted to get the pattern out since it's been a long time coming. And so what happened is I thought I could maybe knit it up in a different yarn, a little more of a lightweight version. And I came across this yarn when I went to the It's a Fabric shop that we have here in Denmark. And also I think in, um, in I think it's in Sweden and Germany and some other countries. It's uh, called Stuff and Steel and now it's called Self Made. So I changed the name. Uh, and this yarn is 100% uh, organic wool, so I thought it could be interesting to see how it is. And I was anyway in the shop to get some fabric, so I got this and I wanted to try to cast this one on and make it with a looser gauge, so it would be more of a drapey, lightweight version. But what happened with that is that my 
uh, the shoulder construction, the way I did it, you're increasing on both sides and it didn't look nice. It looks really nice in this yarn, in the Plotolopi, because it's so fluffy and filling out any spaces, but it didn't look nice with, um, with the other yarn. So I was feeling a little bit discouraged, also because if anyone else wants to make, make this pattern with a different yarn, they might be disappointed that it's not looking as neat as it looked in my sample. So I tried a little bit um, changing the how I placed increases just to see if I could figure out something that would still look very similar to the original. Um, and I think I came up with a way uh, of doing it. So when I have a little more time to work on this, I will definitely uh, try to write down the pattern, uh, like not the pattern because the pattern is written, but I would try to add the, um, the suggestion that how you can work around if your yarn is not looking so nice with the increases. Uh, and what I wanted to do is make the sweater so in this yarn, so very neutral, but um, without the dots. So just make it a very simple sweater because it has a really nice construction and I was really happy with the fit because it's fitted on the shoulder but much more relaxed. So I'm probably going to hold this double with a, a mohair, a strand of mohair and I already made a swatch but I couldn't find it for the episode since yeah, a few things has happened since I made it and uh, I don't know where it went or if I completely unraveled it. Um, but I will show you once I get going and then as I said once I'm I am happy with the result I will add it into the pattern so there's the option to to work the um, yeah to work the pattern uh, with, um, with a little bit of a different shoulder construction wow I'm getting distracted by everything happening around me I'm sitting under my blo the um, apple blossom trees you cannot see it right now but I will show you in a little clip or something at the beginning probably and it's uh, all the leaves are falling right now and it just smells heavenly it's really nice um, these days everything is blooming so yeah a lot of things to distract me little butterflies and bees and um, chickens and airplanes <laughs> so um, yeah and when I was working on this and thinking if I should change the pattern a bit and so on I just realized that maybe other of my patterns could have issues that I didn't notice because I used a specific yarn or um, and that's why I always have my patterns tested but none of my testers noticed this or mentioned this issue as well and probably because they used similar yarns so unspun yarns for this uh, Plotulopi sweater and it made me just think how, how much I can go back and revisit patterns um, and I don't know it's uh, definitely something that I have to decide when to stop kind of because you can always improve patterns you can always keep working on them but I also have to move forward if not I get totally stuck in the patterns and it happens to me quite a lot <laughs> so yeah that's uh, one thing I if I can and if I have time I love to revisit patterns but also sometimes it, I need to work on something new not to burn out myself always looking at the same things. I'm not this kind of perfectionist in that way so I don't feel any joy from <laughs> revisiting patterns unless I see something that makes sense and then of course I can do it. Um, and talking about pattern that is a bit stuck, uh, I think I have mentioned it a couple of times, where is it? It's behind me. Uh, it's this one, it's the Vilnius sweater and it is. it has been tested, my test is finished, the deadline was at the end of April. I was just thinking what month we're in. <laughs> it's really hot today so it doesn't help with my scattery brain. Um, and this is the one and I was planning to work on it in the first week of May and that's when we got sick and then what happens when you are a one person business make it all happen by yourself is that um, when you get sick your emails kind of pile up and then maybe you even had some emails piled up from yeah just being busy for a week and then it just gets really overwhelming everything and you try to get to the bottom of things and you're kind of running behind so that's one thing that happens when you get sick or your kids get sick it's just that it's so easy to shift the um, yeah the balance of how i'm normally doing things and if you don't know i run 
two businesses um, at the same time. I'm also working as a photographer and it has been quite busy because it's spring and everything is blooming and beautiful and I have weddings coming in the summer. So I have a lot of weddings happening. Um, yeah, so just normally it fits really nicely that I can plan patterns in between shoots and stuff. But when you get sick, things just kind of uh, slide a bit but the plan is definitely to try to get that pattern ready and now again it's gonna get ready when it's too hot but it is what it is at least it's a nice lightweight um, jumper this one a sweater so I think it's gonna be nice either way and you can have it ready for the um, for the fall so those were a few patterns um, but I have a finished pattern that is I think almost done being tested I have to look into the, um, the testers comments and that is this pair of socks. I've been waiting to show them because, yeah, I wanted to keep it a secret, but I thought I could show it for this episode. And this is the Homely Bee socks. They are um, based a bit on my Homely Bee shawl pattern. So if you know that one, so I have two socks and um, they have the little row of uh, bumblebees and then they have or bees and then they have um, a row two rows of flowers that are eyelets and they are uh, made the same way as in the um, in the shawl pattern and I actually been thinking about it and a lot of people asked me are you gonna make some bee socks when I came out with the homely bee shawl but the thing is um, to make these bees you kind of have to work bottom up and I hadn't found uh, heel construction that I liked for bottom-up socks so it kind of kept being pushed away to the side but then I saw this heel construction that is the Flegel heel um, and it's just brilliant I really love it uh, it's actually really fun to work it's easy you don't have to pick up stitches you just kind of increase here and then you decrease there and you do short rows as you normally would but it has a more of a um, triangular shape than uh, with the heel flap and the thing is of course you might say why are you not making a short row heel or fish lips kiss heel or one of those heels but I don't they don't fit my foot very well um, so I wanted to find another way to make socks so here they are they are bottom up socks or toe up let's say and they are almost ready to be released I took some pictures yesterday and um, yeah, I'm really excited to to release them and uh, have them out. I always love um, sock patterns are a little more quick and easy to to get out than a garment. So I like to uh, work on garments and socks as how you call them interchangeably. <laughs> and also, I uh, like also to throw in shawls sometimes. I am actually don't have a shawl pattern in the works at the moment, so. I'll have to see if I can come up with something because I love working on shawls as well. They are a lot of fun, um, but kind of ideas have to come a little bit by themselves. So uh, yeah, and the socks, they are knit. Let me just show you again. They are knit in a yarn that is um, a collab with the Jule from Woolen Twine as so many times before, but it's because <laughs> she has really beautiful, stunning yarns and I used her BFL Massam uh, yarn for the shawl and we talked about it and she said that she had heard people ha having success with using this as a sock yarn as well. So this is the BFL Massam 4-ply, not the DK that I used for the shawl, but the 4-ply and it's in the same colorway that is the caramel. Um, and yes, yeah, she, she said she had uh, heard good things about using it as a sock yarn, but none of us have tried it. So it's a bit with a caution that I don't know how it works, how well it holds up. The thing is, it's a, the BFL Massam is a worsted spun, so it means it's a bit stronger and more sturdy than a woolen spun. So it might be good. It does seem nice. I've only tried it on very carefully to take pictures, so I cannot tell you. I don't want to, uh, you know, make it look not so nice for pictures so I don't always wear my samples that much because I want them to look nice if I want to show them off at yeah uh, if I ever have anything to show them off at but <laughs> um, so yeah here they are I think I've shown them many times I don't know exactly when they will be out but I hope by the end of May uh, or the beginning of June so in a week or two probably 
crossing my fingers it's gonna happen and um, that also means I don't have any patterns on the needles because I finished off a few things so before I talk about the last finished object I just wanted to talk about my next I have a sock project in mind and for that I got these beautiful neutral uh, sock can I can I kind of balance it oh god wait for it wait for it wait for it okay there are four four colors that I got um, of the Tukuvul sock yarn so this is a sock yarn uh, let me see if I can show you a label here we go there so I got the Tukuvul sock yarn that has a bit of nylon um, just for durability but they also have a fingering weight yarn that is very similar so you can get that one if you want to avoid the, um, the polyamid the thing is uh, I talked about this in the past I al haven't always had good luck with the non with the more natural sock yarns so yeah I just wanted to get this one to be sure that it works as I said with the other ones this is a bit more of a risky sock yarn and this one I think it's a bit more of a safe sock yarn but let's see it's not always that way um, but yeah, I got these beautiful skeins that I have wound, wound into balls and hoping to make a little pattern with these. So it's going to be interesting. I think I would also use a white. I don't know if I will use all the colors, but I wanted to have a bit of a some colors to play around with. And I might use a white, but I didn't want to order a white because I have a lot of white yarn and I only need it for a little bit. So I'm... And maybe also some colored yarn. I will see what I end up making. Maybe I have some leftovers I can use in combination with these. But they're very beautiful natural yarns. So I'm excited to work with them. I have used the Tukuvul sock yarn before in uh, my a pair of mitts I made once. In the, um, uh, they are called my Lue mitts and they are on in my Ravelry shop um, and they're holding up quite well they're getting quite like the fuss is kind of being worn off but the yarn is quite sturdy so I'm happy with those and uh, I can also tell you the colorway no I cannot cannot read <laughs> and they're kind of a bit from different so this one it says Anga it's number five this one is number 181 is that possible no number seven zero seven and it's called manu no i cannot read it it's written in with the handwriting so i'm not sure what i'm reading this one is called Ru rura and it's number six and this one that is more of um i would say it's a bit lighter than this one that I just showed you and this is called Runo and it's number eight so they are I just wanted to try to see how I like this one is a more warm brown and then the last one is a very dark a little bit cool brown so it's gonna be interesting to see how they work and um, sorry I'm just checking the camera once in a while to make sure it's recording and everything um, yeah, and the only other thing that I finished that I want to show you is um, ah, the sun came through. Look how nice. That's why I put up the the um, sheet behind me, so <laughs> I don't have the sun blazing into the camera, but I can kind of get a bit of light. Um, I've made this little jumper thing. It is the most adorable, squishy. Um, how is it called? Brioche. Uh, sweater and it's a size two one to two year old and it is not my pattern by the way I will tell you in a moment what pattern it is but it has these amazing voluminous balloon sleeves it's really soft and I made this one for when I pho photograph families and a lot of times they are asking me if they can borrow a sweater because they don't have anything nice and I just really wanted to have something cute and sweet. I will put a picture. Um, this is actually my friend um, from Air Crochet. She came out with her daughter to take a few pictures when the um, Japanese cherry, cherry trees were blooming. 
So I'm just going to put a picture here and you can see how sweet she looked in this um, very big sleeves. Uh, yeah, it's a pattern by, let me, because I've opened the, it's called the Ava sweater and it's by Mi Mirella Tainio. I think she's Finnish and I just found it looking for a pattern. So the only thing is you have a really, really aggressive increase along the, um, the raglan so it does seem a little bit insane when you're working on it you're working on really big needles i think it's a eight millimeters you're using so it is kind of chunky like not very pleasant for the hands and so on but it's really worth it and since it's such a small project it doesn't bother me that much i'm i think i'm gonna need another one in a size um uh in a size three to four she has those two sizes so i think that's what i'm gonna do and just to have it for clients um, to borrow if they need a nice little sweater to put over their kids. Um, yeah, I think that's it for today. Let me just sip a little bit because I'm dying of heat. Mm. It's not that it's super warm, it's just, I mean it is warm, but it's just went up from not very warm to <laughs> extremely hot today and yesterday. So just a little bit of adjustment to get used to it. Yeah, I think that's it for today's episode. I will keep you updated on the um, Lope sweater, how the shoulder construction and everything, how I like um, the new increases. And I will also, yeah, show you what else is gonna come. Um, and if you need, want to know when things are gonna be released, Instagram is always the best place to find me and in my stories. And if you don't see me on Instagram, you just have to kind of turn on notifications and stuff because Instagram is being really harsh um, when it comes to the reach. Um, I mean, I have 30 something thousand followers on Instagram and I can see that it's maybe in my stories, it's a few thousand that see my stories. and. Yeah, that happens, but if you want to follow along with what I'm doing and um, you just have to turn on the notifications and Instagram will hopefully remember that you want to see my posts. Um, but that's where I normally keep up to date with things. And in case you have sent me a question about a pattern and I haven't answered yet, please resend it. I just probably got buried. And I want to say with that, that I'm not really using Ravelry message system right now. It's just getting too much having to answer messages in so many places. I haven't opened my messages in a while, I have to admit. It just is a bit overwhelming. So to keep things simple for myself and to make sure I can answer everyone, send me an email. There's always my email address is at the end of the pattern and it says that's where you're supposed to contact me. So that makes things easier for me. But also if um, it might also be a good idea to send me a message on Instagram because I really enjoy using the voice message system and it's a lot easier sometimes to explain pattern questions when I can explain it in a voice message when there's a lot to explain and yeah it's easier for me to do than in writing and it's quicker so if you have sent me an email and you can always send me a little a reminder on um, Instagram and that way I can get back to you because sometimes I don't know who you are on Instagram So for example, if you send me an email with a pattern question and you're okay with me answering back in a voice message It's really nice if you put your name or anything and I can find you there That normally helps <laughs> to get things moving. I mean, I might need to to find someone to help me with the um, pattern support because I it's one thing that can feel yeah, it just, I don't always have time for it, unfortunately. So that's things to, to work on in the future and find the best way to have things um, with my little business. Anyways, I think that's enough for today. I want to keep this short and sweet. Let me see how long. I've been talking for, yeah, 25 minutes or something. So with a little bit of uh, cutting out weird things I say, I think we should be good to go. And um, I hope to see you in the next episode. Bye. Hi again, you thought I was done. <laughs> I'm not. I just realized that I forgot to talk about something and I actually already removed everything from where I was sitting. So 
but I am wearing a new design and I didn't mention it and that is one also one of my finished objects I was like that was short I don't know I did I forget to talk about something yes because it's so warm and I'm totally sweaty and um, I forgot to talk about this design but I decided um, instead of sitting down and talking about it now I will talk about it in the next episode I will try to get it ready for testing uh, and then I can talk more about it next time so Sorry about that. If you're curious, this is a new design. It is a linen, uh, knit in a linen yarn and um, has some really pretty details, but you will have to wait and hear more about it next time. Bye.